So wings for our plane are a foam core sheeted wing, uh, sheeted with balsa foam core in the center, of course. Uh, a lot of guys are, are a little bit intimidated by making the foam core wings, to, at least to start with. I know I was several years back until I started making them and realized how easy it was. Uh, there are a couple things that you need to know. Uh, for the type of foam construction that, that I'm doing here, uh, I use uh, one pound virgin styrofoam. There are several suppliers uh, in, around the country. I happen to be very fortunate and there's one in my backyard. Uh, this piece of foam here, which is 24 by 48 long, uh, I get for about four and a half or five dollars. Uh, the blank that we will be using for this wing is 36 inches long and 13 and 5 eighths uh, wide. So this will be the wing itself and these pieces of scrap I'll use for other things. Ailerons will come out of this, uh, the tail sections will come out of that. So uh, I like to buy it in a 24 by 48 by four inch thick blank. Uh, of course our maximum cord width is only um, about an inch and a half, I believe, maybe inch and three quarter, I forget for this particular plane doesn't matter. Uh, I like to have about an inch on either side of the cull or as cull or husk, some people call it, uh, when it goes in the vacuum. I find it's just a little more stable, uh, a little easier to work with because uh, there are several processes, three or four processes at least, where you put the wing core back in its husk uh, to complete that process. So uh, the first thing we need to do is, is cut this down to, to shape. Or to size. I have measured out uh, 13 and 5 eighths this way and of course 36 inches left that way. Now there are several ways that you can cut this out. Uh, I have found that the easiest way is on a large bandsaw. If you don't have a larger bandsaw that, that has a, a throat wide enough to cut that, uh, you can certainly do it with uh, your wire bow, um, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, you can you can cut this on a table saw. Most table saws will only go up a little over three inches, so you'd have to turn it back around. I find that you get a lot of uh, styrofoam dust that's hard to control. We call those styro gnats. The, the styrofoam will fly all through the air, even if you have a dust collection system like I do on the table saw. So although the table saw makes a nice pretty cut, super precise, uh, you do get a lot of styro gnats flying around even though you try to control them best you can. Uh, Obviously, you're not going to get any of those styro mats uh, cutting with the uh, bow, the wire bow, which in, in my case is super simple. I just stuck some uh, uh, PVC together. This happens to be one inch PVC, Schedule 40, nothing to it. You buy it at any hardware store or, or one of the big box stores. And there's some uh, Nikron wire here. You can find that uh, anywhere online. Uh, there are several different versions. I've tried several uh, for the one inch excuse me, for the one pound virgin foam, I really don't see a lot of difference between uh, the wires other than you may require a little bit different setting on uh, your power supply. And then of course you'll just, uh, either this one happens to be alligator clipped on, uh, a wire on one end, a wire on the other end, plugs into the uh, power source. Uh, this is a 12 volt power source. Uh, they're pretty cheap online. Uh, well pretty cheap. That one's about, um, that one happens to be about $100. You can get them for about $60. Uh, there are some things to look for if you're buying a power supply, uh, and I forget exactly what it's called at the moment. I'll put it in the comments. Uh, there is a feature to this power supply that maintains the power as uh, the, the bow is working its way through the foam so that it doesn't get cold. Uh, and that's easy to spot uh, when you're shopping for those things online. So, we will cut these blanks down to size, and I happen to have a dust collector on the, the bandsaw. to cut our wing core out using the hot wire bow. Uh, not hard at all to do, just need a couple of uh, supplies. 
the first thing that we need to do on our blank that we've cut out the size, uh, and again, this one happens to be 13 and 5 eighths wide by 36 inches long, and we are building a constant cord wing today. Uh, that simply means that, that one end is exactly the same size and the same uh, cord shape as the other end. You could change that, obviously, uh, by using a smaller version of this template, uh, which is exactly what this is. It's the exact same uh, dimensions, it's just smaller, or exact same shape, it's just smaller. So you could put this one here and this one up towards the front over here, uh, and that would make uh, a straight leading edge, a lot like an edge airplane. You could pull it back to the center and you would have uh, a slope on the front and a, a sweeping front edge and a sweeping, a swept rear edge um, like an extra. So you can move these around and experiment however you want. Uh, but this particular plane uses a constant cord design, so a lot like a fun fly plane, or it is a fun fly plane. So both of these templates will be uh, positioned exactly in the same place uh, on either side of the blank. So these are just a, a aluminum uh, sheet that I buy it at the big box store or one of their hardware stores. I have found uh, through trial and error, and I've, uh, I've made many different wing types here. Uh, this is actually a uh, stabilizer, a shaped stabilizer, and this is for cutting out the uh, turtle deck, uh, the foam core of the turtle decks. So I have found uh, through trial and error that uh, the there is a some give and take uh, on the aluminum thickness. Uh, if you go too thin, like like flashing. Um, it tends to get a little flimsy uh, and harder to control. If you go too thick, the aluminum acts as a heat sink and pulls heat from the wire. Uh, and when that happens, uh, the wire will dip down and will burn hotter in the, the center of your blank and not as hot, probably an inch or so in from uh, the aluminum template that is acting as a heat sink on, on the wire here. So I have found that a, uh, about 19 thousandths is what I think this one comes out to be. Uh, yeah, 18 or 19 thou. Uh, and again, I buy that at uh, you know, one of the big box stores, Home Depot, or, or one of those in a 12 by 24 sheet, and just cut it out with 10 snips. Uh, of course, trace a design on top of it, and this one happens to be uh, still taped to it. Uh, and then snip it out with 10 snips, and then clean it up with a sander and then finally go over it with a progressively finer sand paper uh, and get it as slick as you can get it. Uh, the smoother that you can get this outer edge, the better it will travel across the wire without hanging. It's uh, not a disaster if it does hang up or snag for a, a split second or so. It just makes the tiniest little divot uh, in the foam. I don't know if you can see. Uh, there's a little divot that, that came from the factory when this foam was cut here. So uh, underneath the sheeting, that's not gonna be seen. It's not gonna cause a problem at all. Uh, it just makes for a, a prettier uh, foam core, uh, again, which nobody will see. Uh, and it is a little bit easier to make the cut itself. So I like uh, about 19, 20 thousandths. Uh, this one here happens to be, I think around 10 or 11. It is, it's 11 thousandths. Uh, that's regular house flashing. I think that's just a little too flimsy. Um, you don't get any har hardly any of the uh, heat sink effect from that one because it's so thin. Uh, so I think about 19 or 20 thousandths conveniently. You can buy it at the hardware store again. Uh, turns out to be a good compromise there. So the first thing we need to do to attach these rascals is uh, decide where we're going to put them. So we need to draw a center line on this foam core. Oops, got the wrong Sharpie. I like to use an extra sharp or an extra fine Sharpie because the, the finer this line is, the more accurate you're gonna be when you place the templates. And then we need to mark which way is up. And that will forever be up for this wing core. <coughs> 
And the reason we want to do that is because every other process that we use or that we take this wing core through will register off the bottom. Uh, it doesn't make any difference uh, if, we're, if our center line is exactly in the center. It makes no difference at all uh, as long as we are always registering off the, uh, the same side, which in this case is going to be the bottom. You could always register off the top if you want to. Um, but then you would have to put this up here and make the line. So, all right. So there's our center line, and we need to attach the uh, the uh, templates here. And it's gonna be hard for me to do this while I'm sitting on the table where you can actually see it. Bring it over here where you can brighten that line up just a bit. I can see it perfectly, but I don't know if you'll see it on the camera. So, maybe it will focus there. Looking through this peephole and this peephole here. Uh, we're centered and we always register or I always register off of a arbitrary mark in the back and that's where I happen to have put that one. So as long as I always line up the same spot in the back, always line these two peepholes up exactly, then this template will be the same on this side as on the other side. And to hold the template down, I've just drilled little 16th inch holes in the templates and I use uh, just any little, this happens to be a brad nail that uh, a buddy of mine uh, soldered some little washers on the end of and painted orange because when you drop them on the floor they're easier to find if they're orange. It's probably one of the best tools we have doing this is these little uh, these little nails and I just use the sander to sharpen a, a nice fine point on the end of them. Uh, that way they glide through the foam better rather than pushing the, the little foam cells out of the way as they go in. And then double check to make sure that you're lined up at the very back and your peep holes uh, show that you're centered exactly and then flip it over and do the other side. Uh, now, if you notice, uh, while I was talking and not paying attention, I made an error. Uh, my template is marked up and the core is this way, so I need to pull it off. Up is up. We're registered off the mark in the back, and our peep holes show that we're lined up just right. So, this is the front side. And I just line this one up exactly like I did the other, and then pin it down. There are a couple of things that I want to mention when we're talking about making these templates. Uh, first, uh, if you notice here, there's not a lot of tail or runoff room for the wire to fall off of uh, when you're bringing the wire through. So that makes that a little bit difficult. Uh, I like this, this wing cord being as long as I can get. I try to utilize just about the entire 13 and 5 eighths. Uh, I could make another set of templates, but it, it works for me if I'm just very careful uh, the one stage in making this airplane that you do need uh, a helper is uh, holding the bow. For smaller surfaces, I can do it myself uh, and see both sides at one time. When you're running a larger uh, wing, a, a longer wing, uh, that really needs to be precise. Uh, it's easier to have two people, and you'll see this in just a few minutes. Uh, one can count out the numbers as you're progressing along, and the other just makes sure that you're at the same uh, the corresponding number on the other side. If you don't do that, uh, 
one person could get just a little bit ahead of the other one and you will actually change the shape of the wing uh, as it goes, uh, as the wire travels through the, the blank here. So you wanna make sure that you're both progressing at the same stage. That's not as critical as if we were doing a uh, tapered wing uh, because obviously one side is smaller than the other and you want that taper to be uniform as it works its way through the, uh, the core. So uh, this one happens to have 20 numbers on it as, as you go through. So if we were using this uh, smaller root cord over here, uh, cord template, then we would make a corresponding 20 numbers going across. And at the thickest part of the cord, uh, we would make sure that the, the right proportion of numbers is reflected. So uh, the thickest part of the cord here happens to be about 15. So uh, that's three quarters of the way through. So we would measure about three quarters of the way here and make sure that 15 is there. And then do the same thing. So that your wire is traveling the way that you want the wire to travel. Uh, if you look on some of these other templates that I've made, uh, they have an exaggerated tip. Um, the part of the cord that we're using, uh, the wing cord that we're using actually gets cut off about right here, but it's easy for the wire to ride down uh, and control uh, as it comes out and doesn't fall off. Uh, one of the things that you wanna make sure is that as that wire is traveling through, uh, both of you exit, you and your helper exit at the same time. Uh, if one exits and, and falls down before the other, you will actually slice the, the foam at the very tip uh, and, and cause that, that tip to be deformed a little bit. Not that big of a deal, um, but it is aggravating and it makes, uh, the, it, makes it a little bit harder for the, the husk or the, the shuck to uh, hold that sheeting down when we're in the vacuum. So when you're making your templates, uh, just make you a nice, uh, it looks kind of like a dolphin nose there, and have some extra come out the back. You can see that this one is, is very exaggerated coming out the back. Um, and the, the core, this happens to be a vertical stabilizer here in rudder assembly. So uh, the, used, the part of the core that is used ends here and all of this out here is just extra for the wire to, to come off uniformly and the same up here. So I think you get the, uh, the message there. Let me go grab my helper and uh, we'll cut the wire or uh, cut the phone. All right, so now that I've got a helper, we'll make the first cut here. And it's important that you just want to land on the edge right there. Oops, let me put some weights on it right quick. I forgot to do that just to hold it still. You can use anything for weight, it doesn't take a lot. Just land on the edge, and then when you get ready, go. And count out as we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a little bit of down pressure, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And remember when we come out, we want to come out and stay on the end. Don't let it fall off. 17, 18, 19, 20, and about to come out. Stay right there. Good. Okay. So we'll see how that looks. Looks real good. Nice and straight. Looks real good. So we'll flip it over. It doesn't really matter on this uh, wing design uh, because it doesn't matter which end you start on because there's not a steep up ramp on this side. Some of the some of the designs that we use, like this is a semi-symmetrical uh, wing. You have more of a ramp on one side than you do on the bottom, or more of a ramp on the top than you do on the bottom. I found that you want to come in on the shallow end. 
it's easier to exit on the steep ramp than it is to go in and try to climb that steep ramp uh, when you're starting off. This one doesn't make a lot of difference, it's just that the tail has more sticking out. Uh, it's easier for us to, to start off from. Oops, let me uh, have a rag right here. And just a cotton rag, an old piece of a t-shirt. Be very careful, don't burn yourself on the wire. Just get out any residue that may be on there from the last cut, otherwise you'll just have a drag going through. Again, won't make any difference uh, in the long run because it's going to be covered with sheeting. All right. I'm on. Cut on. Go. Just a little bit of down pressure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and coming out. Oh. That one didn't feel right. Yeah, we're going just a little bit quick, but it'll be okay. Yeah, so uh, that one scalped the end just a little bit, but that's fine. That's uh, well within the area that gets trimmed off. So the next one will just be a little bit more careful to slow down at the very end. That way we're not pulling the wire or dragging the wire as much. So I'll get the other one set up, and we'll, I'll call you back. Okay, so this is a logical spot to end this episode. In the next episode, episode number five, we'll drill the holes for the wing tube sockets and start to install those. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. That'll help with the uh, YouTube algorithm and get us a little bit higher in the ranking. And I'll see you in episode five.